for the third time this season. The New Jersey Devils lost to their Cross River rival. And is it really a rivalry if something big didn't happen? Because something big did happen and involved Matt Rempe. Who else? He's been in the headlines for the past few weeks. But is it really good for him and his career? And what does he need to learn going forward? We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. Your Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, college hockey club play announcer. Dell's driver for Pucks and Pitchforks and also part-time credential media member Trey Matthews. Before we talk about the incident that involved Matt Rempe, before we recap this game against the New York Rangers, before we get into any of that, I first want to begin this episode with an apology because I know I've been away from my computer for about a week now. I was on vacation. I was in Florida. Nothing bad happened. And a lot has happened since my latest full-fledged episode in which I talked about Lady Ruff getting the can. For example, Tyler Toffoli, Colin Miller, Vitek Vanacek, no longer a part of the New Jersey Devils organization. And I know it was a very hectic day during the trade deadline, and some people have mixed emotions about it. And I touched on it briefly with Gil Martin of Locked On NHL to just basically give my quick thoughts on the matter, but I didn't really do a full-fledged episode. I had some of you guys reach out to me on social media asking me where I was at, and I told you it was nothing serious. I was just taking a bit of a breather. I was just on vacation, and unfortunately, my vacation just lined up with a trade deadline. Nothing more, nothing less, and I just wanted to begin today's episode with an apology, but what's the one thing I always say? When I miss a few episodes, I always make it up to you guys. I have some other cool stuff in the works because, as you guys know, I attend school in Arizona, and the Devils are set to play the Arizona Coyotes this weekend. I hope to travel with them to Vegas when they take on the Golden Knights. I love Las Vegas for more reasons than one, but we don't need to get into that. But uh, anyway, that's enough of uh, talking about stuff that uh, happened in the past. Let's talk about the latest game that the Devils played against their Cross River rival. And unfortunately, it resulted in a 3-1 to loss. And fun fact for you guys, the last time that the Devils won back-to-back games, you would have to go back to mid-February, February 12th and 13th, when they beat the Seattle Kraken and the Nashville Predators. Talk about being a very inconsistent organization It's amazing that theoretically the Devils can still compete for a playoff spot despite everything that has happened. But obviously, I don't think this team is going to the playoffs. And this was the first game of a back-to-back for the Rangers. And uh, they put in Jonathan Quick at net, not Igor Shesterkin. So I guess we're back to the Devils facing backup goalies. And unfortunately, the Devils weren't able to do anything with it. And I put this out on social media. And I might get some slack for this. but Jonathan Quick, you can have whatever opinion you want to have on him, but that man is a three-time Stanley Cup champion and a three-time All-Star, and he's the backup goalie for the Rangers. I get it. Hindsight is usually 20-20 when the Rangers made that signing. I don't think people anticipated for Quick to be this good, but the fact that he has that sort of pedigree and he's the Rangers' backup option, it it just tells me that Tom Fitzgerald, this offseason, really needs to get back into the lab. Now, while we're on the subject of goaltending, Kapo Kakinen, the newly acquired goalie at the trade deadline for the Devils. Now, before I talk about Kakinen's uh, Devils debut, I first want to talk about what got him here in the first place and why I like the matter. Because Vitek Vanacek was traded to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for Kakinen, and people were scratching their heads because Kakanen's numbers aren't really any better than VTEX. They're not really all that good. Well, think of it in this sort of context. I think it's safe to say that the Sharks are a worse team than the Devils and the defense in front of goalies like Kakanen and also Blackwood, not really all that good. And remember, v 
Vitek Vanacek was signed to a multi-year deal, and now you get his contract off the books, and Kakinen is set to become a UFA at the conclusion of this season, and that sort of gives Tom Fitzgerald some more wiggle room to work with, so maybe they can get Jacob Markstrom come the offseason. But when looking at this present moment, Kakinen was pretty much the bona fide star for the Devils, and what a debut. He kept the Devils in this game. Because at the conclusion of the first period, according to Alex Chavansi, he put this out and said that Kakanen made 13 out of 13 saves and stopped 1.55 expected goals at all strengths. And the Devils got a little bit lucky because Artemi Panarin, he originally scored the opening goal, but it was waved off because it was deemed that he was offsides and that was the correct call. And you think that maybe that can strike some life into the Devils? Well, Unfortunately, more or less the same of this season, which is sometimes the Devils just come out lifeless and it doesn't seem like they have any spark underneath them. Because I was actually listening to uh, Matt Loughlin and Chico Resch call the game. And here's something that they were hammering home, especially the first half of this matchup, which was it seemed like the Devils were afraid to shoot. And I remember Chico Resch was breaking something down in which he said that Shimon the Mets on a particular play should have shot the puck. And unfortunately, it resulted in a good look by the Rangers who took it down to the other side of the rink. It was a two-on-one advantage, and it forced Alexander Holtz to take a slashing penalty. And what Chico said after that play concluded was that the Mets is young, he's going to develop, and he's going to get better with time, but he has to shoot in that case. And I don't think it's just for the Mets. I think it was for the Devils in general because – it's something that we've been seeing the last few weeks, which is when the Devils generate a lot of shots, sometimes it doesn't result in any goals and it results in a lot of blocks for the opposition. But on the flip side of that, sometimes we're seeing the Devils just struggling to shoot, period, and they don't create those good looks for themselves because I think Jesper Brad he had a few golden opportunities. Same with Jack Hughes. And it was just a struggle for the Devils' offense. And I know that we've experienced the Devils – basically have piss poor outings the past decade or so because with the exception of 2018 and last year the devils have been struggling to be a consistent playoff team to put it nicely and they were struggling in their offensive end they were struggling in their defensive end because case in point the curtis lazar and uh jonas siegenthaler blunder that resulted in mika zabanajad getting his first five on five goal in 31 games. Of course, it comes at the expense of the Devils. And it just goes to show you what type of season this has been for the Devils. So with the exception of Capo Kakinen, Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer extending their point streaks on Shimon Nemetz's goal, this was just a lackluster performance against a Cross River rival. And this was on NHL Network nonetheless. And it just seems like despite the Devils sometimes being given a lifeline because the Red Wings, they're currently on a few game losing streak. For time being, they have fallen out of the playoff picture. Like I just said moments ago, it's amazing that the Devils are this inconsistent. They've dealt with this amount of injuries. They were essentially sellers at the trade deadline. Yet, if they just put a string of good games together, they're right back in the playoff hunt. And I guess that's just how it goes to show you that the team isn't as bad as it as it's portrayed to be, but unfortunately, it, it just doesn't seem to mesh together. And that's just sort of the main takeaways I got from the first, second, and third period, which is with the exception of the Jonas Siegenthaler and uh, Matt Rempe uh, incident that took place towards the end of period two. This was a very uneventful matchup for the Devils. It just didn't seem like they had any life, any spark, and they were just scared to shoot. And that's just all I can really tell you uh, in this matchup. It was just an uneventful, uninspiring performance. And this is the first episode in which I'm doing a post-game recap during the sh hopefully short-lived uh, Travis Green era since he is the interim head coach. Now, we're going to talk about the Curtis McDermott, Matt Rempe, and Jonas Siegenthaler, I guess, controversy that took place towards the end of period two. But before we continue... I want to tell you guys about Game Time because maybe you still want to see the Devils play up close and personal. I love the Game Time app, as you guys know. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Views from all seats of the venue, lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, 
job loss protection, etc. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, we have a lot to talk about in regards to Matt Rempe and what he did to Jonas Siegenthaler. But before we get into that, some background, because I think it's safe to say that the Rangers and Devils rivalry, sometimes it does live up to expectations. And here are some injuries that have occurred during uh, these matchups. Back in November, Tomas Nosek, he left the game with an injury. And as you guys recall, he was out for an extended period of time. At one point, he was on the LTIR. February 22nd, Nathan Bastian, he left the game with an injury thanks to Matt Rempe once again. His debut of facing the Devils during the Cross River rivalry matchup was very short-lived because I think that happened just a few seconds or a few minutes into his first shift of the game, and Bastian has still been sidelined ever since. And Jacob Truba, he tried to go at uh, Nathan Bastian a little later in the game. And then in this game, March 11th, Jonas Siegenthaler sustained a facial injury thanks to an elbow from Matt Rempe. And there's more to this story because, as you guys know, I just said moments ago that Matt Rempe had sort of a dirty hit on Nathan Bastian that resulted in Rempe getting ejected from the game. And usually when you injure a player, you're supposed to, quote unquote, pay the piper. You're supposed to pay your dues. And the Devils, one of the complaints that a lot of people had for this team was that they were a little too soft. So what do they do? They get Curtis McDermott, who adds more size and is not afraid to throw the mitts and get into a few scuffling matches because this dude is the tallest forward on the team. He surpasses Timo Meyer. He stands six foot five and he weighs 233 pounds. That makes him the heaviest player on the roster. And he said in his post-game interview that he was aware uh, as to what happened between Rempe and Bastion because that took place before the Devils got him via the trade with the Colorado Avalanche. And McDermott, early on, was trying to tempt Rempe into dropping the mitts and fighting him. But Rempe, he said no, and he wasn't going to do it. And I'm just like, no, you have to do it. That's the code. That's what you're supposed to do. And Bill Spaulding even said pregame that it seemed like that Rempe was skating near McDermott at the red line and uh, no, no words were being exchanged. But you still got this feeling that something could still happen. And unfortunately, early on in the game, no one really got their money's worth because let's face it, this is one of the only reasons why McDermott is going to remain in the lineup similar to Brendan Smith is because he's an aggressive player. He's not afraid to throw his body around. And this is how he's going to make his money. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. And this is a good opportunity for him to get some payback for his teammates and make Matt Rempe uh, get his comeuppance. But what happened a little later in the game? Well, uh, unfortunately, McDermott and Rempe did not drop the mitts in period one, like I said. But towards the end of period two, it seems like the momentum is completely taken out of the devil's sails. And there's only a few seconds remaining in the middle period of a uh, frame and Siegenthaler, he nudges the puck up ice. And then next thing he knows, the elbow of Rempe hits Siegenthaler's face and Siegenthaler goes down and he did not return for the rest of the game. Before I share my thoughts, here's an update. Travis Green said it wasn't really good because Siegenthaler did not return the rest of the game. And you have to be a little concerned as to uh, what Siegenthaler might be dealing with. Could it be a concussion-like system? Could it be a jaw? We can speculate, but we still don't have any new information. But it was that bad to the point where he could not return. Obviously, uh, a penalty was going to be ass assessed to Rempe. Now, as a matter of fact, was he going to get ejected once again? Lo and behold, he was ejected, and McDermott was hunting him down. McDermott finally had enough of Rempe's antics and wanted to fight him unfortunately it didn't it didn't happen the linesmen they moved Rempe away from McDermott and Bryce Salvador said it during the intermission report like if the NHL wants players to police themselves 
then that's fine. But you have to let McDermott and uh, Rempe duke it out in that sort of aspect because that's a dirty play by Rempe. And not only that, it's the second time in which he has injured a Devils player. And now this is the second time that he's been ejected. And now the NHL is going to have to step in and possibly suspend him when he could just pay the piper. He can pay his dues if McDermott uh, drops the mitts and knocks uh, some sense into him, if, if you would. But that didn't happen. And I think a lot of people were angered by that. My message to the NHL is that if Rempe is not suspended, then shame on this league. Like, seriously, if you really want to protect the players, then you have to suspend Rempe and you got to get a point across because that is unacceptable. And for those Rangers fans who are going to comment something on this video, you know in your heart to heart that was not a clean play because remember how angered you were when Tom Wilson did something similar like a dirty play to Panarin a few years ago, the entire Rangers discourse was not too happy with Tom Wilson and rightfully so. And the same thing can be said for what Rempe did to Siegenthaler. That's unacceptable. Here are my thoughts on the matter. I've had an enforcer on this show before and his name is Cam Jansen. And I think every Devils fan can remember what Jansen brought to this organization, which was how did he make his money? What was his bread and butter? It was being an enforcer and just trying to assert himself. And it's not just Jansen. The Devils have a good history of finding players that are not afraid to drop the mitts and just knock your head clean off and, and play the game physically. You got people like Scott Stevens, Can Danico are prime examples. But at the same time, when Jansen appeared on this show, Remember, he had a big hit on Thomas Caberlet one game, and Caberlet was down onto the ground, and he looked like he was seriously injured. Then a few weeks later in Toronto, Jansen said it on this show that he knew that he had to pay his dues, and Wade Belak wasted no time dropping the mitts and knocking some sense into Jansen, and Jansen knew it was coming. And the same has to be said for Matt Rempe. Because you can't injure a, a Devils player, and now he's sidelined ever since, and you don't want to fight. Because like I said, McDermott, tallest forward on the team, heaviest player on the team too. My thing is, is like, he had to learn a lesson. And he didn't learn it. He, and now Siegenthaler could be out for an extended period of time because of this play. That's my thing, which is, I like the idea. But the execution, it's just lacking. And this is not a good look for Rempe at all. This kid has had a cup of coffee in the NHL so far. And it seems like his goal is just to get into some sort of tussling match with every single player in the league. Hell, his first NHL shift in the outdoor game at MetLife Stadium was a fight, which makes for great headlines. But I don't know if this is how you want to like leave your legacy or something like that. And to make matters worse... When he was assessed his uh, penalties, he waved goodbye at the Devil's Bench or the Devil's fan base, whatever the case might be. Not a good look, especially when you see that you seriously hurt a player and that was not a clean play. What are you doing? This really needs to be addressed. And if it doesn't get addressed, and if Rempe is not suspended within a reasonable amount of time, the league has failed. Wishing the best for Jonas Siegenthaler. McDermott had this to say about Rempe post-game. Take a listen. I knew about the hit on Mash and going into this game. Um, first shift, I asked him. Um, there's a bit of a code, and I think he, I thought he would have answered that, but um, I don't know what he was told, but he said no. And, um, you know, after a hit like that, you know, it kind of goes with those saying you should answer the bell in some way um, and be a man about it. Um, and then game goes on, then he throws another hit like that, get, gets kicked out and um, possible suspension. So there's a right, right, right way to go about things and a wrong way. And, um, you know, I kind of lost uh, a lot of respect for him tonight. He's absolutely right. And like I said, I guess all of you now see why Curtis McDermott was added onto this roster and why he might continue to play. 
Not the best player, but I think it's safe to say that he definitely adds some more physicality to this uh, Devils team. But those are my thoughts on the Rempe, McDermott, and Siegenthaler drama. And the Rangers and Devils will play each other one more time. And I believe that game is on April 3rd. We'll see how that pans out because there's been a lot of injured bodies throughout the course of the season between the red and the blue. Now, before we close out today's episode, I compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. Let me tell you guys about FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. And always remember to gamble responsibly. Okay, let's compare the stats, give the Devils a letter grade, and get out of here. Shots on goal differential, 26 to 20 in favor of the Rangers. Faceoff percentage, 68.3% to the Rangers, 31.7% to the Devils. Power play, the Devils' power play was basically non-existent despite giving a, an extended power play after the Rempe's snafu and uh, Rangers were all for four in their power play as well. Hits 21 to 20 in favor of the Rangers block shots, 16 apiece. giveaways Rangers led the department eight to nothing takeaways Rangers led the department 11, three. If I had to give the devils a letter grade, I think it's just going to have to be a solid D because with the exception of Curtis McDermott, she the Mets and, Capo Kakinen, and I'll throw in Nico Heischer and, and uh, Jack Hughes because they extended their point streaks. Um, this game, just like I said in the first period, it was just nothing special. And I think a lot of people uh, found themselves relatively bored watching the game because it just seemed like the Devils, despite giving some opportunities, they didn't capitalize on them. And it, it's just sad to see. And it's been a while since they've won back to back games. And it's it's just been a it's going to be a drag to the finish line. That's that's all I'm going to say. It's it's going to be an absolute drag to the finish line. And for any Ranger fans who watch this video and leave a comment, you're, you're just kicking a horse while it's down. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. And also, why are you listening to a Devil's podcast? That that's all I got to say. But thanks for the viewership. But I'm just going to say like you, you're you're kicking a, a, a horse that's already down. All right. So have at it if you want. That's your prerogative. But. Let me know what you guys think. What did you think of Matt Rempe, Curtis McDermott, and Jonas Siegenthaler and their bit of an incident? What did you think of this game in general? And how can the Devils improve from here on out? Luckily, the season is almost over. But it, like I said, it, it, it's going to be a slow grind to that finish line. But as for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.